This is the Canon RP, and it might be the best beginner camera for serious photographers and some video shooters. And despite the Canon RP being a few years old, people are still buying a ton of these cameras because of one very specific feature in the Canon RP and the cost of this camera. So in this video, I'll be talking about who the Canon RP is right for, if it's actually worth the money, and is there just maybe something better out there for the same price. Also, links down below for the best pricing on the Canon RP. So first up, let's talk about the design of the Canon RP because when it comes to these smaller beginner cameras, companies often cut corners and just a few corners can often lead to pretty massive compromises in how you use this camera and that makes it kind of a frustrating experience. But the Canon RP is different. The Canon RP is super small. It can literally fit in the palm of my hands and that makes it a really compact and easy to carry camera. You can easily stick this in your backpack, a jacket pocket, and you can easily take this camera around with you anywhere you go. Also, it has a really solid grip and it has a really nice feeling in my hands. Although for someone like me who has pretty big hands, my hands are a little too big for this camera. So you may wanna invest in a grip extender. But the Canon RP has really solid build quality and it's a super robust camera. But one thing to note is that it's not weather sealed. So you should protect this camera from dust and water. On top of that, it has two separate dials, one for changing aperture and one for changing shutter speed. For ISO, there's no dedicated dial, but if you're using Canon RF lenses, you can actually program the front dial on your Canon RF lens for ISO, or you can still access ISO via the touch menu. And the Canon RP has your typical mode dial, but it also has three custom profiles for different shooting scenarios like portraits, landscapes, and low lights. But one thing that I don't love about this camera is that to go between manual photo mode and video mode, it is directly opposite to one another on the mode dial. So you really have to turn this dial for a while before you get to the right setting. But the Canon RP does have a side articulating screen, which you don't often see in a beginner camera like this, which yes, does make this camera good enough for vlogging. You can do that if you want. And the side screen is also touch sensitive. So not only do you have touch autofocus, you can also use the touch sensitive side screen for all of your menus and change all of your settings, which makes this kind of like a smartphone. If you're new to cameras, it's a really easy camera to just pick up and figure out. The Canon RP also has a really good electronic viewfinder. It has a fluid 60 frames per second refresh rate. So when it comes to tracking subjects through the viewfinder, it does a really good job and there doesn't seem to be any sort of lag. Now the Canon RP does not have a joystick on the back for changing your autofocus points, but when you have the Canon RP up to your face, you can also use the screen on the back to change your autofocus points like a joystick. So they kind of have you covered with everything despite not having a joystick. And there's also a four directional D-pad on the back of this camera that can be customized to bring up different settings. For me, I have it customized to bring up my picture profiles, change my autofocus modes, and bring up my ISO. But one thing that I should mention is that this camera has a pretty small battery life. You'll get about 250 shots and maybe a few hours of casual video for on and off use. But if you're a power user, you're definitely going to want extra batteries for this camera. But one really nice thing about this camera is that it can also be charged via the USB-C port so you don't have to bring your battery charger with you. And if you wanna pick up some cheap batteries, you can get a two pack on Amazon for about 30 to $35. And the Canon RP also has an input for an external microphone and a headphone jack so you can listen to your audio. This is super helpful for anyone that's planning on doing some serious video work with it or YouTube videos like this. You're gonna to wanna to be able to monitor your audio. The internal audio in the Canon RP is decent. You could probably vlog with it. It's serviceable, but it's not amazing, especially considering that this is an older camera. So don't expect the moon. And another thing to note is that this camera does not have a built-in flash. Usually beginner cameras like this do have built-in flashes, but because of who this camera is made for, a built-in flash probably wouldn't even make sense. But the Canon RP is shockingly good in low light as you'll see later in this video. And another thing to mention is that when the Canon RP first came out, there weren't a lot of good lenses for this camera, but that has changed. And two lenses that I highly recommend is the Canon RF 50 mil, which is about 150 to 199, or the Canon RF 16 millimeters, which is somewhere between 199 to 250. Overall, the Canon RP is perfectly designed to be a good companion camera and a good beginner photography camera, except for maybe the battery life. There's really no downsides to this camera, considering the fact that you still have a side articulating touchscreen and a really solid electronic viewfinder. And have I mentioned how small this camera is? But inside the Canon RP, you have some really impressive tech, especially considering the price of this camera. Because the Canon RP has this one feature that still has people buying this camera 
despite it being a few years old. And that is the 26 megapixel full frame sensor, which is a very respectable amount of resolution Considering the cost of this camera, most full frame cameras are only between 24 to 26 megapixels and a camera that has more resolution than that usually costs $2,000, $3,000. So considering the fact that you have this camera with 26 megapixels, it's kind of a bargain. And 26 megapixels is plenty of resolution for printing out your photos, cropping into your photos without losing a ton of detail. And with this amount of resolution, you can do some serious retouching and editing in Photoshop and Lightroom without having to worry about your photos falling apart. But the sensor isn't just good because of the amount of resolution, but also because it's a full frame sensor. Because both photo and video shooters usually want a full frame sensor because full frame has a lot of advantages over a smaller APS-C sensor. One of the main reasons people usually want a full frame sensor is that it allows you to get a much larger field of view. And this way you can shoot wider landscapes and in certain conditions with the right lens, it also gives you more bokeh or more of that blurry background effect when you're shooting portraits. And I would personally argue that most professionals want to shoot full frame because it has more of a cinematic and more of a professional look to the photos and videos. Now I know some of you guys are gonna be so mad at me for saying that full frame looks more cinematic, but there's a reason most Hollywood commercials and professional photographers gravitate towards larger sensors like a full frame. But on a more technical and nerdy side, a larger sensor also allows you to capture more light, thus giving you higher fidelity photos and videos and naturally just better quality overall. And by being able to get more light, you're also going to see really good low light performance from a full frame sensor that compared to an APS-C size sensor. Shooting with the Canon RP, I was able to take photos at 12,800 ISO and I was shocked by how clean these images were. I shot them both properly exposed and underexposed and I was really impressed by how clean these images came out. One thing to note is that the Canon RP isn't really known for its dynamic range. So this is one of those cameras that you don't want to shoot at a low ISO or underexposed. You generally want to give it proper amount of light or overexposed by a little bit and actually bring down your highlights. If you try to pull up your shadows, you're going to see a lot of noise and grain. The main thing to consider when you're thinking about full frame cameras is that most full frame cameras at a minimum are 1500, 1700, even 2500 dollars. And the Canon RP is significantly cheaper and considering it's a few years old, it's only going to get more affordable and this camera's often on sale. Thus, make sure to check out the link down below. However, the more expensive full frame cameras can generally shoot faster when it comes to photos and videos and they also have other features that the Canon RP is lacking. So let's talk about what exactly the Canon RP can do when it comes to actually shooting with this camera. The Canon RP has two separate shooting modes. In one mode, it shoots at five frames per second in single focus mode. This is where the camera locks your focus into one place and it does not move even if your subject moves and that shooting mode is about this fast. Decent enough for most action and this is about as fast as most beginner cameras are even if they're APS-C. And in the other mode, you have two frames per second in tracking autofocus. This is where the autofocus moves with your subject and this is much better for action shots. And that shooting mode is about this fast. Now, whether these shooting speeds are good enough for you will really depend on your shooting style. If you're shooting portraits, landscapes, or a model that isn't moving too much, five frames per second is actually fantastic. You're going to be able to capture your subject and if there's a little bit of movement or a little bit of variation or just handshake, it's going to compensate for that. Now, two frames per second might seem slow, but it's actually decent enough for most lifestyle shooters or someone that is just casually walking around see something cool and you just want to snap a quick photo and just in case the subject is moving, the autofocus will keep up. But if you feel like the speed isn't quite fast enough for you, I'm going to be talking about a camera later in this video that's very similar to the Canon RP that does have significantly faster shooting rates. However, one really big positive of the Canon RP that I simply don't see enough people talking about is the fact that it can shoot unlimited JPEGs. This means this camera never needs to slow down or take a break and write the files to the card. You can pretty much shoot forever without having to worry, which makes using the Canon RP a really carefree and easy process. And if you're shooting raw photos, it can also shoot 50 raw photos in a row, which is a really impressive frame buffer. Also, let's quickly talk about the video in the Canon RP, because while this wasn't made to be a video first camera, there are some design features like the side articulating screen and the spectacular specs inside of this camera that might make the Canon RP a phenomenal video camera for certain types of shooters. The Canon RP can shoot 24, 30, and 60 frames per second at full HD resolution. 
With the real-time video, you can use it for casual video clips, sit down YouTube videos like this, or for travel vlogging, and you also have two times slow motion for some cool action shots. And the Canon RP also has a clean HDMI out, so you can use this as a webcam or for live streaming, and you're basically getting more for your money. But something to note is that the Canon RP has mini HDMI as opposed to the micro HDMI. Most people hate micro HDMI because it breaks all the time, and mini HDMI is much better. And the Canon RP can also shoot 4K video, but it may not be right for most people because the Canon RP has a 1.6x crop when using 4K. Basically, it zooms into your lens and gives you a much tighter field of view, which isn't a great thing where the main selling point of a camera is the full frame sensor. But the 4K would be good for some close up static detail shots or product videos. However, the 4K is also only at 23 frames per second, so you don't have any 29.9 frames per second. But the one thing that really irks me with the 4K video in the Canon RP is that the autofocus gets way slower when you're shooting in 4K mode which is probably a good time to talk about autofocus and stabilization. The Canon RP has a dual pixel autofocusing system, which at the time of the release was one of the best autofocusing systems you can get. And it works phenomenally in both photos and full HD video. It has face and eye tracking, and it does a really good job at tracking people. And the autofocus overall is really sticky and reliable. And the Canon RP also has digital stabilization for smooth handheld video. So if you're planning on vlogging with this camera or doing any kind of movement shots, you're going to get very good video. So the main question is, is the Canon RP worth it? And who exactly is this for? Well, the Canon RP is probably the cheapest full frame camera out there today. While it's not super cheap, I think if you want a full frame camera for portraits, landscapes, product photography, or just artistic photography, and you want that full frame look with a high resolution sensor, this is the cheapest way to get into the full frame ecosystem. But there's two things you have to consider. Because this camera is a few years old, there's cameras that are about the same price or a few hundred dollars less that have a smaller APS-C size sensor that will shoot faster with better autofocus and with better 4K video. If you really want those features and you don't care about the full frame sensor, then those cameras might be a better bet for you to those options being the Sony ZV-E10 and the Canon R50. I'll leave links down below. However, if you're like me and you love the look of full frame and you know you definitely want full frame, Another camera to consider is another camera from Canon that is slightly newer, and that is the Canon R8. This camera is significantly more expensive, anywhere between $300 to $500 extra, depending on where you live, but that camera has way more power. It has the latest Canon AI autofocus that can intelligently track subjects like people, animals, cars, and it also has 4K up to 60 frames per second that is also downsampled from 6K video. So the 4K is just out of this world, it can also shoot five frames per second in continuous autofocus and 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, making this just a way better camera in every single way when you compare it to the Canon RP. And it also has a 24 megapixel full frame sensor as opposed to the 26 megapixel sensor in the Canon RP. Personally, I like the Canon R8 better, but the extra money that you would spend on the Canon R8 is probably the money that you would spend on a good lens for the Canon RP. So it really comes down to your budget. The Canon RP is the cheapest way to get into the ecosystem, but if you have the money to spend, the Canon R8 is a great option. And if you wanna make sure you get the best possible pricing on whatever camera you choose, make sure to check out the links in the description down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.